What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, and today I have back with me Josiah Spackman of Digibyte, an innovative blockchain that can be used for digital assets, smart contracts, decentralized applications, and secure authentication. How are you doing today? Good, good. That's a really awesome like elevator pitch as well. I've got to write that one down because that's a great one. <laughs> I'll send it over to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this isn't going to be like a nuts to bolts discussion about Digibyte. Uh, Digibyte has been, along for, been around for a very long time. I've had Josiah on here several times over the years, probably as early as 2017. So over the past three or four years, Digibyte has continued to build. They're adding new spokes to their wheel. Uh, so I kind of want to have you on here talk about uh, recent events, talk about Digi assets, what's coming next for Digibyte. And of course, we can get into a little bit of the speculation with why has price surged recently and how you guys finally got on the short list for Coinbase and Coinbase Pro. So we'll that's see a lot if, to cover. Yeah, we'll see where this leads us. Always with you. Uh, it's it's uh, less structured. We're here to have some fun with you. You've had been on here a lot. So I guess if you just want to start with, you know, why do you think Digibyte started gaining traction again? You know, the past couple of months, we've really seen the, the uh, social um, content around Digibyte going up. We can see that with Lunar Crush. Uh, they kind yep. of monitor all that. And then also, of course, price followed that as well. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. And obviously, like, I'm not 100% certain. I'm the, like, this is just pure speculation on my behalf as well. But I think, to be honest, it's going to be a combination of a couple of things. So first of all, we've seen a lot from Digibyte memes, just a lot of engagement there. And I mean, people appreci appreciate a, a, a lighthearted picture. Right. They do. I mean, I freaking love it. Um, I mean, so that's certainly, we, we've seen it doing the rounds. And so all of the team that are kind of behind all of these memes have been really active and just kind of growing that space and growing the awareness through that. I think also coupled, to be honest, with the likes of the digibyte.io website is also now in 30, uh, 30 something languages, whereas previously it was only in English. And so we've been able to go out and help people and educate them in their own native language, which has been amazing for people. Um, and I kind of feel like we were shortchanging ourselves, you know, and missing out on, on a decent space of people simply because we didn't have it in their native language. So if you go to digibyte.io, it'll automatically try and detect based on your web browser that, hey, I speak Japanese or, hey, I speak Dutch and give it to you natively like that. And then finally, I think the other thing as well as we saw the launch of a couple of other exchanges, particularly some like in the Middle East and in Europe and things like that. And they were able to be discussed in their native language with people in that region. I kind of feel like just the whole, just right. it, was, it was a perfect storm that kind of came together and people are finally cutting on to Digibyte. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. You know, it is a global monetary system. So if it can be understood globally by anybody of any ethnicity, then then that gets the word out there. They have the ability to go to several of these liquidity pools to start acquiring DGB, to mine DGB, to spend and use DGB. Uh, so that's been really exciting. I think also, uh, you know, this year, really starting this year, you guys, the shirt kind of says it all. You guys have been kind of cross branded with Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Digibyte as truly decentralized uh, cryptocurrencies in the space that can be used not only for monetary policies, but also other policies as well, as far as identification, smart contracts. And I think in previous years, it was almost like a competition between you three. And now you guys are kind of coming together and understanding that, hey, if we all work together, we're all decentralized. Uh, mm -hmm. We can make a difference in the crypto space, which I think has really helped the brand of Digibyte as well. Yeah, and, and certainly when, when we look at the likes of Bitcoin, it's really quite funny because a lot of people will obviously do immediate comparisons. Fair enough, because the code for both Litecoin and for Digibyte was based on Bitcoin. So, of course, they're going to do comparisons and say, well, what's different? What's changed? But from there on out, you look at, you look at Bitcoin and you look at Digibyte and the, the sheer fact that you can run a, a full node, and that's kind of the goal to be able to run it on like a a Raspberry Pi, right? for example, for the foreseeable future without having to do any external hard drive or anything along those lines. It is definitely a different kind of target market compared with Digibyte. We're not going after the same market segment, if you will. So the whole competition like Digibyte wants to surpass Bitcoin and replace it is completely 
I feel misguided is kind of a strong word, but you know what I mean? Like, like we're not after, we're not after that same section. Like there's more than enough of the crypto pie to go around and we don't even want their slice of pie. Right. That's probably that the best sense. way of summing it that up. That makes sense. And you know, with Bitcoin right now, it's, you know, it's, it's the index for the market. So it kind of displays the health of the overall market. It's also yeah. seen more as a store of value where you want to kind of accumulate your sats and build a position for the long-term goal of uh, really it protecting your wealth. While Digibyte, it's faster, yeah. it's cheaper, it's got other use cases. Uh, so maybe it can be used for some of the day-to-day -day transactions or uh, what we're going to talk about next. Let's talk about Digi assets. And the reason I want to talk about Digi assets is I really think digital assets, NFT, and DeFi is really going to be the next movement for the cryptocurrency space. In 2017, it was really ICOs and raises for these big hopes and dreams. And now this year, I think digital assets, NFT, and uh, DeFi is be will become a reality. It's a good way mm -hmm. to get non-crypto people into crypto. It's almost mm -hmm. like getting something. You know, it's not a physical being, but we live in a digital society, so it's like a digital object. Uh, so, I mean, what's going on with the Digi Assets? Is it launched? Can I download it? Um, yeah, I, I think I saw some demo videos, but I would like to get your opinion on it. Well, speaking of demo videos, I'm not sure if a lot of your viewers know that that Nick himself actually helped out back in the day with our demo video for our iOS app so that we could get it listed on the app store. We had to show a transaction occurring. We sent it off to Apple. So again, thank you to that. Right. And, right. and it worked. We're on there. Yeah. So so basically now if you if you've still got the app, you can fire it up, join the test flight and you'll immediately get DigiAssets support in your wallet. So if you happen to have received any, they'll now show up correctly and, and will just work. So yeah, you can do, I'm, I'm completely with you on that one. And I feel like everything from um, NFTs to collectibles and, and everything uh, like ticketing, all, all that kind of juicy stuff is, is, I feel we're going to start to see a lot more of a kind of convergence on blockchain, specifically because Let's take, for example, a ticket to go see a basketball game. You're going to rock on up. You're going to go see a basketball game. You're going to have your ticket on your phone. Because you've got it on the blockchain, the event and the stadium can basically know for certainty that you've not gone and subsold that on and on and on to other people. And so you can do away with ticket scalping, which means that you, the end user, are getting a better price. The, the, the people don't have to worry about ticket scalping or other identification because they gave you the ticket. You're the person who bought it. So immediately just by putting this on the blockchain, we solve a ton, a ton of issues that people have. And sure, it might cost, let's say one day it costs a cent to send it. Well, if you're, if you're running the event, screw it. You just send a cent worth of Digibyte, whatever, along with the, the token so that they can then burn it later or something. Or, you know, we've got heaps of different things that we can do there. But the, the key point is, is that we're solving the, I mean, you can solve identity there, so you don't have to fumble around with your piece of paper and show it to the security guard as you're walking through the, the turnstile and things to make sure that you're you. And we've solved ticket scalping, we've solved inflated prices, we've solved the, the transparency on the blockchain as well. So many, so many cool things just by being able to run that now on Digibuy through DigiAssets. But it gets even better. Let's say you're sitting down. Have you have you been to a game or anything lately? Any kind of sporting event? Not lately because of COVID, but pre-COVID, yeah, definitely. <laughs> of course, of course. What, what what was it you went to? It was probably like the Monster Jam, Monster Truck Derby. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Right. Okay, so you're sitting down. You're at, you're at a Monster Truck Derby. Do they actually have Jumbotrons there? Oh, yeah. They do it at the Edward Jones Dome here in St. Louis. The old football okay. stadium. Okay, so, so picture this with me. You're sitting down, you're in your seat, and you've, like the trucks are all out there on, on the field, if you will, and they're, they're going at it and, and like stunts, everything, whatever. Now it flashes up on the Jumbotron, and it says, get your collectible limited edition collector's card, specifically for this truck that you've got there that, that's, that's out at the moment, whatever. Now the first like thousand people that scan this QR code that's just shown up on this Jumbotron can receive a DigiAssid on their phone, a limited edition collectible just because you were there. And it gets better. It's not just like your standard basketball or X-Men card where it's a static image and it doesn't change. You know, you've got your player stats, but nothing else. This one can be interactive. It can be animated. You can include video with it. You can include the statistics and things all from within the wallet. 
And now you've got yourself a limited edition collectible that's not going to, you know, you're not going to lose it when you move house. It's not going to get foxing around the edges and fade over time in the sun. It's yours permanently. Yeah, that sounds like, really what exciting. A, and you know, what people, a cool collectible. Yeah, people collect, you know, at the World Series game or something, they collect the ticket. Now they can maybe get an in-game collectible that displays the final score and different images and different stuff. Exactly. And we're starting to see that trend come, you know, with um, Wax, uh, another project. They had Tops re-release their Garbage Pail Kid collectibles on the blockchain. So I think you're starting to see big companies take notice of it. And I think sports teams, like you're saying, can really use that as a marketing ploy, as a, almost a free giveaway. What's it cost them to create those digi assets? A penny a piece and make it out of a thousand. It's like ten dollars to make this limited edition type of thing and really getting fan engagement. Because after a game, two games, three games, people are gonna be looking up at that Megatron for that QR code to to be popping up there to try to grab their limited edition collectible. Exactly. Now now we can start doing cool things as well. So if you're let's say you're a company like. Um, you release a, a limited edition historical Michael Jordan uh, NBA like digi asset, right? And, and it's got like one of him doing like a slam dunk or something. And so maybe then you take the like the team and throughout the, the season when you are there and you're in person, you get these effectively airdropped digi assets by scanning the QR code. But then maybe some of them, like if you want, uh, you can do like a limited edition message. Once you've collected all the players on the team, you can get an additional one. Like they can keep track of that in the blockchain and go here, we're going to send you an additional asset, which has the team going, you are our number one fan. Thank you. And thank right. you so much for coming to the games. You know, all that kind of really cool stuff. You can start doing that. You could, you could sell a special limited edition digi asset, a message maybe from the team captain going, hey, you know what? We, we're really grateful for fans like you. We've, we've been training hard. Look, here's some behind the scenes footage of us training that we wanted to share with you. And this is like a limited edition digi asset. It's, it's almost like free VIP content to reward their exactly. best. Games. So, so, yeah, the, the, I mean, the things are really endless there. And that's why I think NFT, uh, the average Joe can pick up on it. And if you can download yep. a mobile wallet and use it now, I know you guys are, are digi, digi buy with digi assets just trying to work into that space. I know ENJ is there. I know Wax is there. So it'll be exciting to kind of see where the chips all fall. But I know you guys are always out there presenting these ideas and getting in yep. the ears of different people. So maybe if somebody has an in that's watching this with the sports team, there's some free ideas. Download Digi Assets, bring it to your boss, and you'll be the hero. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, grab it yourself. It's available on the test flight now. If you want to give it a whirl, give us some feedback. Now, talking about uh, ID authentication. Now, the last time yeah. we talked, uh, it was pretty new and you guys were doing your thing and trying to get different websites to bring it on as an alternative to 2FA or other mm. standard passwords. Um, so, I mean, where are we at with identification with Digibyte blockchain? And then also, I think I just saw a, a tweet about VID and some kind of partnership or integration with Digibyte as well. Have you seen that yet? Do you know anything about that? Uh, well, so VID, uh, well, if we start with the, the DigiID, so we've got DigiID is working. We've got a few... Um, different places that you can go to to use it, a few different exchanges and the likes. Uh, we've done things like I have opened up my house door with DigiID and some other cool stuff as well. We've also had the likes of Antum ID build on top. And now what they're doing with that is creating kind of like an all-encompassing suite of products that you can use to tie into other websites through plugins and things really easily. But they are also now working with additional blockchains to try and basically push it as the whole entire crypto space. So we're seeing them now working with, with Bitcoin as well as Redcoin. And as a driving force behind the idea that you can use your, your crypto wallet as your identity, I think that's awesome. And I'm so stoked to see that. We've also got support from Coinomi. So if you're a, a fan of the Coinomi wallet and you use that, you can sign in with DigiID anywhere that supports it as well. So again, yeah, really awesome stuff from them. Grateful for Coinomi. But in terms of VID, as far as I'm aware, they are, I mean, they've used Digibyte themselves for, for quite some time for storing the, the records that they create as part of their, their project. And I believe it's something along those lines. I haven't, I mean, it's, it's nine o'clock here in the morning. Unfortunately, right. I haven't. <laughs> We'll have to catch up I on think that I again. saw something along those lines. Like they're they're doing more with with Digibyte and things. I saw something. I've got to go. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> oh, no, all good. I just saw it pop up. I think it was just a couple hours ago. So 
Yeah. Doesn't surprise me. I got a whole bunch of notifications on Twitter. I've got to go read in just a minute. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what else is new with Digibyte? I know you guys are working with uh, Shore Signatures and a couple other things from a technical yeah. standpoint. Uh, what's new with Digibyte? And then after that, we'll kind of hang out and we can speculate a little bit on uh, KuCoin or on uh, Coinbase and some of these other things Discuss yeah. the KuCoin AMA. Uh, but what's going on from a technical perspective on Digibyte right now? Well, so one of the things, like you mentioned, with them in Snow Signatures, which is going to be really cool in terms of both compacting the amount of data that uh, a transaction stores, which sounds boring as hell when you, when you phrase it like that. But think of it more like we can squeeze more into the blockchain as it is. It's going to improve people's privacy, which is always a good thing. So let's say that you and me, we've got a, a multi-sig wallet and, and we're, we're paying somebody. If we're using Schnorr signatures, they can't tell that it's a multi-sig wallet. It just looks like a regular transaction. So a whole lot of additional privacy measures there. We can start doing some extra juicy things with coin join and mixing and again, further improving the privacy there as well. So this is really quite cool to see the just, just all of the things that you can do with Schnorr signatures, which you can't do with your traditional ECDSA. Right. Which I think is uh, important been for the future of the monetary policy of did you buy, you don't want to, especially if you're using your main wallet, you don't want, that's like you being able to see my bank account on every transaction I send you, which most people don't yep. want. So the optionality of privacy, I think is great for functionality and usage on a, on a daily basis, but then also the optionality probably keeps you in the regulatory green area where you're not really going to be a target uh, by governments for being a privacy, yeah, a strictly exactly. privacy currency. And you can still see the transactions themselves appearing on the blockchain, which is, again, part of that transparency, but at the same time, the privacy. So we feel like Schnorr Signatures is a really, really good balance between the two of them compared to going the whole way where you everything is private, like, uh, say, for example, with Monero. Right. And so Monero is great with what they do. But with Schnorr signatures, we're kind of, we're more dialing it back just a notch and we're erring on the side of caution. If you have an address, you can still see the balance of that address. But with all of the additional things, uh, like I've mentioned, it's going to allow for greater privacy. So you're not going to immediately go, cool, I can see that Joe's just gone and sent Nick thousand did you buy or something along those lines. Right. You're going to, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. So this is this is obviously this is very different from Mimble Wimble and things. Uh, we've already got Dandelion, which is in, in the project for hiding your IP address privacy. Just to clarify for a few people, Mimble Wimble, because we often get asked why not just use Mimble Wimble. Uh, Mimble Wimble itself is more about the fungibility. So you you hide the the actual coins and you use the UTXOs instead. And it's better for let's say you received some of those coins from the Cryptopia hack. And then other exchanges, when you go and try and send it, would basically go, we can see that those coins came from the Cryptopia hack. And so we're not going to honor that deposit. That's more what Mimble Wimble is going to solve is the fungibility. Schnorr signatures, Schnorr based coin join, taproot, all of that kind of stuff like we're looking into is more going to solve, not solve, but improve your privacy. So, so that's kind of the difference there. We get asked all the time about that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think you guys are probably making a good educated decision there, and we'll see how it all plays out uh, moving forward. I mean, yeah, and go so we're hoping that, that in, in combination with that, we're also going to be able to do Prog Pal. Uh, we've been working alongside Christy Lee Minahan, who's the, the author of Prog Pal, and we're going to replace one of our five algorithms. So we're in a pretty unique place where we don't have to do anything that's going to compromise the security by doing a real quick, like, hard chop, and we're going no more ASICs along the side, and, and now it's just GPUs, which could make you more vulnerable if you're a single algorithm. Whereas with Digibyte, because, we're, because we've got our five algorithms, we can go, we're just going to pluck this one out, and we're going to put this one back in over here instead. And the other four keep ticking along, and, and they give you that 80% plus security while you're replacing that algorithm. So we can do some real cool stuff there, allowing people to mine from home, further enhancing the distribution and the supply of Digibyte and giving it out to more people. Um, What's the timeline you... on that, do you think? It's happening now. Okay. So hopefully later on this year, I like it to be honest, I wouldn't envisage it's going to, to flow over into 2021. It might though, so. Okay, well that'll be but, something but to uh, definitely keep us in tune on and I can let the community know that there might be another yeah. opportunity for them to mine some Digibyte. 
and that's great if you're if you're a home person you've got your graphics card and you just want to fire it up when you're not playing yourself gta or right. fortnite whatever you know you're like i'm just gonna make a couple of bite overnight just keep it and and the great thing is is because of that enhanced distribution we're further decentralizing the project and not just like the blockchain you know it's not just about who's got a copy of the code but also how many people can we get that into the hands of so pretty excited about that i think that's i think that's really cool we've already done so well with the the distribution uh, i did back in april while i was in lockdown i fired up some of the stats and i was like let's look at at, at bitcoin litecoin did you buy other way around i'm mirrored but <laughs> and and so during that time i think um there was maybe like was it 12 or 14 on on bitcoin same for litecoin and then you look at the unique miners on digibyte for that same 16 hour period and there was like 147 or something right so it's going to further improve that which i'm also really excited and it, about it kind of goes back to the roots of crypto you know back in the day many of you probably don't even know this but bitcoin was mineable with your cpu and gpu and you know that's your how it got its roots it's kind of how it got there so digibyte's kind of going back to the roots by adding in that algo and i think it could be a good calling card to get gamers involved or anybody who has an average computer while you go to sleep download this run the algo earn a few digibyte learn about crypto send it to your mobile wallet and see if there's a digi asset for sale or a digi asset you can create with those so yeah it's actually it's really funny as well because i, I like you you get tagged in it semi-regularly we've got a couple of people that regularly like to bring up some of those older videos where we've talked about staking as well and and things it's really funny because literally just like uh, a week or two ago, I was, I was talking with some friends basically going, I really just want to like find some kind of regulatory information, which says if you do that, then Digibyte will become a security. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I couldn't, I couldn't find anything concrete nice. that would basically say I that. Wasn't, I wasn't going to bring it up, but you did. So there you go. You put it on yourself. And so I think it's, it's interesting. It's I, think I, see, I think you're going to see more of those questions. If and when Ethereum 2.0 launches and Ethereum goes to staking, because then you're going to get government regulatory uh, guidance on that because Ethereum's already been yeah. in government, been approved as not as a utility token, even though they did their ICO, but they were so early. So it'll be interesting if the regulatory stance changes yeah. when ETH 2.0 launches and it switches to staking. I think that'll tell you a lot about the future of staking. And then if it goes well, that's when I think you're going to get bombarded with, uh, is Digibyte going to have staking again? I think that's when they're going to pull our old interviews where I was trying to convince you to add staking yeah. three years ago. Uh, you know, I would I get, have a lot I get more Digibyte if so you regularly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I, so, so in response to that, because I know that um, this, this person on Twitter um, follows the two of us. And, and so they, they keep, they bring it up and they'll tag. The there's, there's several of them. The short answer was I couldn't conclusively prove otherwise and rule it out, right? So I, because I, I tried, man, I really tried. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't, I can't rule it out. Who knows? We'll, we'll see. Um, we've got a lot of people that are pushing for that to happen more towards uh, 2035 when, when the supply is going to, to start to dwindle off. So who knows? Who knows? a long road we'll see where we go and a decentralized product project means uh decentralized decision making so we kind yeah. of talked about you know a little bit of history on digibyte what's digibyte going on now and why i think they're starting to move into a good market direction and a good market sector mm. with the digital assets so let's talk a little bit about speculation you know also at the same time as that staking video is when coinbase started putting out guidelines for listings this is before they really started listing all coins. I know Digibyte, you went through and you guys thought you met every single guideline. I think mm -hmm. somebody even printed it off with a binder and hand delivered it to Coinbase's office or Brian Armstrong. This was years ago. Man, time yep. flies. Yeah. And we're optimistic about that. Never really heard anything about it. Yep. But now about a week ago, Coinbase puts out, hey, we're looking at whatever it is, 15 assets, 10, I don't know the number. But Digibyte... I kind of blacked out when I saw Digibyte on there, so I didn't count the rest. But Digibyte, yeah. <laughs> Digibyte is on the list yep. that Coinbase is looking at it. 
And if they meet the criteria, criteria that list will be narrowed down and maybe eventually Digibyte will get listed. Now, I don't want anybody to hold their breath. I don't know anything anybody else does. Also, they've done these lists and not listed all the coins. Yep. But I think that's a step in the right direction. Did you re-hand deliver the binder again? Was this just kind of <laughs> out of the blue or what happened? So, no, look, to be honest, like, I, I had no idea this was, this was coming. We, I, think, I think over the last three years, there's been three separate occasions where I've submitted details about Digibyte to them. Uh, I think it was back in 2018 or 2019 where they, they posted some more guidelines and they said, hey, we're, we're, we're opening ourselves up for, for more projects and things. And so I submitted again all of the details of Digibyte, all about us and all of that juicy kind of stuff as well. So there's been three separate occasions. This was kind of out of the blue, which is cool. And, and they're basically, so like you said, they are investigating and looking into Digibyte. And I suppose they're going to be weighing up the everything from the security through to the market needs. So, we, I mean, we've seen them constantly looking at the security of the blockchains and things that they are working with, which is really, really cool because they did things, I think they take like single confirmation deposits on Dash. So I think that's awesome. And at the same time, around about the Litecoin halving time, they then bumped up the number of confirmations you need on Litecoin. I think they like tripled it or something like that because they were aware, right, there is a whole lot of hash rate out there that could be potentially malicious. So they're, they're very security focused. And it's really interesting as well, looking back through some of their other YouTube videos, it's great to see their focus on that kind of security. So hopefully what we're going to see is them looking into the security of Digibyte. And with a little bit of luck, they'll find out just like Circle and Poloniex did and come back to us and make a statement like, yeah, we, we, we think Digibyte is more secure than Bitcoin, which is what Poloniex and Circle was it Circle? I think it was Circle at the time, did in 2019, which was great. So yeah, I I welcome it. I, I love the idea that they're going to look into Digibyte. Maybe they can give us some more details about Multi-Algo and Multi-Shield and how they work together and why they love it and what they think is great about it. Maybe they could implement DigiID. How amazing would that right. be? That would go focus on security with this. Yeah. So a speculation run rampant there. I don't know. I haven't heard anything back. Um, there's obviously no obligation on their behalf to do it. So well, I'd like to think, though, that they'd like us. Like you say, the puzzle pieces are start to fit together. Uh, if you look at it, also, uh, the community behind Digibyte is very large. What do exchanges want? They want users and they want community members for a good project. So it meets that need. And uh, Digibyte volume has also been steadily increasing as you guys continue to get added to other exchanges. So we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting if they actually start put up, put out a follow-up statement, or like you said, if they do mm. pick Digibyte or narrow it down to three, maybe they'll do research on a couple projects. And uh, like you said, how crazy would it be if they actually implement, they're always focused on security, implement DigiID as one of the authentication uh, methods for users on their platform. I think that would be cool. But to be honest, like what, what really, I mean, there's there's two parts to, to Coinbase. There's both getting your hands on crypto, which is great because they have such a name. They have such a brand recognition. And so many people have like their app, for example. It's a great way to get your hand on some crypto. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that for a lot of new users, the whole prospect of downloading a wallet, keeping a private key safe, which wallet do I go for? Which, which hardware wallet do I go for? All of these other questions. And so if they were to use Coinbase to, to basically to trust Coinbase and go, you hold on to my, to my Digibyte for me. I trust you to look after it because of your, your focus around security and things like that. I think that too is another great option that people would have, especially for new people coming into the market to be able to trust Coinbase. I mean, not your keys, not your crypto, obviously, but at the same time, some people are simply going, you know what? I want to just dip my toes in here. I want to get 20 bucks worth. Let's just give it a whirl. And, and to remove that kind of friction, I think is a really key point here that, that Coinbase can offer and, and help the Digibyte community right. with. I think a lot of people got to realize that everybody starts somewhere and you're not going to buy a $100 hardware wallet when you just bought your first $100 worth of crypto to get your $10 of Bitcoin for free from Coinbase. Exactly. It's just not realistic. Um, so yeah, not your not your... Uh, not your keys, not your coins once you get over a certain threshold. But like you said, I think a lot of people, when they get into crypto, even even though Coinbase has had their issues here and there, I live in the United States. 
So when I've had people come up to me, I'm wearing a Bitcoin shirt and I, they say, what do you do? I say, here, let me send you a, a DM on Twitter with my link to Coinbase. You go sign yep. up. If you spend a hundred bucks, they give you 10 bucks for free. Learn about it. They got Coinbase earned to learn about it. So I think yep. regardless of the struggles they've had recently with outages uh, for seasoned traders and crypto people, mm. I think it is still probably one of the number one outlets uh, for beginners, especially in uh, mm. the United States. So I think it would be a great liquidity pool for DGB. I think uh, it would be really interesting with the similarities with Bitcoin, if they did a Digibyte earn with to teach people about Digi assets and some other things, which how cool would that be, be on the be on the table and transaction fees are so <clears throat> fast and cheap that it's not going to cost them an arm and a leg to really make that happen. So we'll mm. see. We'll try to keep this speculation in hand a little bit in kosher because <laughs> who knows, maybe Brian Armstrong is watching this. Uh, so hi, Brian. <laughs> Brian, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Josiah and uh, maybe he can get some answers for you. I guess the last thing I'll touch is I did see that KuCoin did do an AMA with Digibyte, which I think is yeah. pretty huge. You know, in my mind, KuCoin is on that trusted exchange list and has really been uh, filled the gap for gems and cryptocurrency as Cryptopia mm. had their hack and their issue. So I think a lot of people have migrated to KuCoin for a lot of their altcoin trading, altcoin staking, uh, utilizations of their wallets, et cetera. Um, I didn't get a chance to really reread the KuCoin AMA. I don't know if you're familiar at all with what was discussed, but if you are, if you want to touch base on that or how that interaction occurred to uh, get Digibyte in front of the eyes of all the KuCoin users. Yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to it because of the, the timing. Um, it would have been like 3 a.m. in the morning for me or something. <laughs> Drink some coffee. <laughs> Just kidding. Just yeah, exactly. Suck it up, Joe, and just do the AMA. No, but the other the guys that, that were involved. Um, so I was still involved um, as part of the the planning of it and things and, and in discussions with the team. Um, and and the KuCoin team were great. It was cool. It was really awesome to see. And the like, I went back and, and kind of skimmed through all of the questions. And uh, KuCoin's statement, I believe, was something along the lines of there were too many questions to count. And yeah, I'd believe that because it just goes and goes and goes. It was great. There was questions about everything. And it was really awesome to see the enthusiasm that people have and like this, this hunger for more knowledge. And so it gives me a real appreciation for doing these kinds of discussions like with you and other like the daily Digibyte updates and things because people are hungry for that kind of knowledge. So yeah, thanks to KuCoin team for, for doing that. They also recently, I think, was it a... Was it a USDT uh, pairing they gave us? I think. Right. I believe so. I don't have to double yeah. check. But they did do some kind of updated pairing with you guys. Yeah, which was really awesome to see. And and yeah, clearly there are a lot of people out there that still are not familiar with Digibyte. We've still got a lot of work to do in terms of both introducing it to people, but then also the education side of things and explaining to them why it matters, why we have five algorithms, why does it give us so much security, uh, the importance of the the economics behind having a thousand to one ratio against Digibyte, uh, sorry, Bitcoin, and and all of that kind of thing, the faster block timings, what it means, what about the orphans, all of that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. I think we went, we kind of talked over the technical standpoint. We talked over some of the speculation <laughs> with why price is moving. Is it going to go higher? What's going on with Coinbase? KuCoin AMA. I mean, is there any last things you want to mention to the Digibyte community right here before we kind of sign off? I just, I just say thanks. It's, it's been really great to see, like you mentioned, especially earlier on from the Lunar Crush team have been following the social metrics and things like that. And so seeing people getting out there and getting excited about Digibyte, but also one of the things that I'm really passionate about is, is helping and, and educating people. So if people are out there and they're passing on like the Digi facts, our short little like two sentence pictures that have facts about Digibyte. I think that's awesome. Pass that around social media, help, help introduce people and, and yeah, keep on being awesome. Yeah. Crypto has come a long way. It's got a long way to go. I think Digibyte mm -hmm. is probably here to stay. It's proven its security. It's proven its effectiveness as a monetary policy. And now it's trying to dabble into its effectiveness uh, for digital assets, which I think is going to be a huge sector for the market. Let's see if Digibyte can keep up with the likes of Wax, ENJ, and others. Somebody, you know, in my mind, I think it probably will. Uh, so until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here on Learn Crypto. What is Digibyte? 
Digibyte is a blockchain project, like Bitcoin, only faster, more secure, and forward-thinking. Digibyte allows you to send and receive funds instantly, across borders and without a middleman such as a bank or a clearinghouse. There is no sign-up, no personal details required, no minimum funds, no chargebacks, no limits, no accounts to open, no forms to fill out, no way to freeze funds, and no discrimination. Unlike dollars, bolivar, euro, or pounds, Digibyte is also finite in its supply. There will only ever be 21 billion in circulation by the year 2035, with no more able to be created after that. Digibyte is the perfect way to separate finance from state. Digibyte is also backed by the best cryptography and mathematics in the world, using the same public and private key encryption that is used to secure nuclear launch codes. It's also open source, meaning anybody can review and contribute to the project. Digibyte is decentralized, meaning there is no central or single point of failure that can be controlled, attacked, or taken down. Digibyte is permissionless, so you don't have to ask anyone permission to use, send, or receive Digibyte transactions. Digibyte can also be used to store data, notarize documents, log into websites, secure medical records, and so much more. It's easy to get set up with and start accepting Digibyte today. There's no bank that takes a cut whenever you receive transactions and all transactions are final and permanent, unable to ever be undone or rolled back. To find out more about Digibyte and start accepting it today, visit www.digibyte.io for more information.